Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Monday. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, I have got to tell you guys, I read some of your dolphin reports from last week, and your writing is just getting better and better every week. So I'm super, super impressed with you. Um, this week, we're going to learn a little bit about sharks. Uh, I know you're excited to learn about sharks. Um, I'm going to start off, um, well, what you're going to do this week, rather than start with the KWL chart, we are going to, I'm going to give you um, a whale, or excuse me, a shark paper. So every time you hear a fact or you read about a fact, uh, sharks, you can write your facts inside of the shark, just like we would do in the classroom. Uh, if you run out of space inside of the shark, you can write outside of the shark. Um, again, you can always turn to the back. Uh, you're going to learn so many facts about sharks this week. I would also recommend that you get um, like a tape measure, something that looks like this. Um, mom or dad might have one in a toolbox, um, and it just kind of stretches out. It tells you how long. Um, you're going to be learning about some the lengths of some different sharks, and you're going to find out that some of them are really, really little, but some of them are really, really big. So it might be fun to go outside, and maybe with some chalk, you can mark down the different lengths of different sharks that you learn about this week. So that might be something that you can have on hand. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off this week with a story. It's called Big Shark uh, Lost Tooth. And if you have lost a tooth before, you will probably be able to make a text-to-self connection because in this story, this shark ends up losing a tooth. Okay, so this is um, a story that is make-believe, but it's a fun story, and I just wanted to share it with you. And again, as I'm reading this story, you're going to find out that you'll hear a lot of um, real things about sharks that you might be able to add to your fact chart, your shark fact chart as we start. All right, so here we go. Um, big sharks lost tooth. Chomp was a big lemon shark who loved playing hide and seek with his best friends Ollie the octopus and Minnie the manta ray. Minnie will never find me here, Chom said, as he ducked behind a rock. He happily took a bite out of his coral reef crunch bar. He felt something hard that wouldn't crunch. His, it was his tooth. It had fallen out. Wow, Chom said. I found you, Minnie said. You are making too much noise. I don't care, said Chomp. Look at this. And he's showing her tooth. It's too bad the tooth fairy doesn't visit the ocean, Minnie said. Why not? Chomp asked. I don't know, Minnie replied. She just visits boys and girls who live on land. No fair, Chomp said as he swam towards home. Hmm. Chomp found his mother working in her garden. It's not fair, Chomp shouted. What's not fair, sweetie? She asked. The tooth fairy, Chomp said. I lost my first tooth and the tooth fairy won't visit me? Chomp showed his mother the tooth. Ooh, it's a beauty, she said. Maybe the tooth fairy will come. You never know. Now that night, Chomp put the tooth under his seaweed pillow. I really hope she visits me, Chomp said, just like she visits the boys and girls on land. Me too, Chomp's mother said, and there's going to be lots more teeth. Young lemon sharks like you lose an entire set of teeth every week. Can you imagine losing all of your teeth every single week? Is that really true, Chomp asked. Absolutely, she said. But as you lose teeth, new ones will quickly replace them. So unlike our teeth that take kind of a long time to grow back, shark's teeth, they fall out and boop, another one comes right up super fast. Now after he fell asleep, Chomp's mother searched the ocean floor for a gift. I don't want Chomp to be disappointed, she thought, but I've never heard of the tooth fairy coming to the bottom of the ocean. But finally, she found a sand dollar near a sea anemone. I hope he likes this, she said, as she replaced Chomp's tooth with the sand dollar. 
But when his mother accidentally bumped him, Chomp woke up. You're not the tooth fairy, Chomp shouted. Uh-oh. He angrily jumped out of bed and looked for something to bite. He found an old piece of wood and bit into it. But another tooth fell out and Chomp began to cry. I'm sorry you're so sad, Chomp's mother said. I'm going to do whatever I can to get the tooth fairy to come here for this tooth. Chomp fell asleep and dreamed that the tooth fairy visited them. I wonder. The next day, while Chomp was busy playing, his mother secretly wrote a letter to the tooth fairy. Dear tooth fairy, my son Chomp has lost another tooth. He would be so happy if you would visit him. I know you are very busy and we live at the bottom of the ocean near the Bahamas. Here is a map. Sincerely, Chomp's mother. P.S. Chomp is a lemon shark. And she put a map down here so that the tooth fairy would be able to find where they are. Now, how can I get this message to the tooth fairy? Chomp's mother wondered. I know, she exclaimed, getting this Gertie the seagull. She knows everyone and she's always willing to help an old friend. So she began to swim away. What's going on, Mom? Chomp asked. Uh, I have an errand to run, she replied. I'll be right back. So Chomp's mother swam as fast as she could to the ocean surface, and the other sea creatures quickly darted out of her way. Gertie! Gertie! she called out. And after a few minutes, Gertie the seagull flew overhead. Mabel, your sharp-toothed rascal, what brings you up here, Gertie asked. Can you please deliver this note to the tooth fairy? It's very, very important. Sure, Gertie replied, anything for you. And off she went. Gertie flew to the top of the fairy mountain and into the tooth fairy's castle. Now, after a busy night, of visiting boys and girls all over the world, the Tooth Fairy was still fast asleep. Gertie dropped the note from Chomp's mother next to the Tooth Fairy's pillow and started to fly away. The Tooth Fairy awoke with a start. What are you doing here, she called out, come back. But Gertie was gone. And the Tooth Fairy noticed the letter and read it. And when she finished, she shouted, a lemon shark? Oh, how exciting. Hmm. Now, the Tooth Fairy grabbed her magic bag and flew out of the window, and she flew for hours and hours checking her map along the way. And as the sun went down, the Tooth Fairy arrived at the right spot, and she dove into the water. Now, racing past colorful jellyfish, playful seahorses, and a scary swordfish, she found Chomp's mother watching him as he slept. Chomp had already put his tooth under the pillow. Now maybe the tooth fairy will come tonight, Chomp's mother said in a soft voice. And then she turned and saw that the tooth fairy was standing right next to her. Is it really you? Chomp's mother whispered. Yes, indeed, the tooth fairy replied. I just had to come after reading your letter. The tooth fairy reached into her bag, replaced Chomp's tooth with her gift. And now I must go, she said. There are so many children I still need to visit. Goodbye, Tooth Fairy, Chomp's mother said. Thank you so much for coming. And in an instant, the Tooth Fairy was gone. And the next morning, Chomp woke up and immediately looked under his pillow. It's a sparkly crystal, he said. It was the most wonderful thing he had ever seen. Was the Tooth Fairy really here? Chomp asked. And Chomp's mother nodded. Look, she wrote something on the bottom. You're growing up. You're losing teeth. There will be more. It's true. And this crystal shows how much you shine. I am so proud of you. Do you think she'll ever come back? Chomp asked. I don't know, his mother replied. It really doesn't matter, though, Chomp said with a big smile. She came to the bottom of the ocean just to see me. He looked at his new crystal. Thank you, Tooth Fairy.
pretty nice little gift. The end. So that's just a fun story. I like reading that story because we can all make text to self connections with that story and losing teeth. Okay. Boys and girls, what your assignment is for today is you are going to be reading an article about sharks. Okay. Now for this activity, you're going to need some crayons. You're going to need a yellow crayon, an orange crayon, a green crayon, a blue crayon, and a pink crayon. And I'm going to put this paper onto Class Dojo so you can read exactly what colors you're going to need. And you're going to use those colors to identify evidence in the text, okay? So you're going to be reading facts about sharks. Oh my gosh, Miss Holton, that's so much writing. I know, but you are, oh my gosh, almost in second grade, you can totally read this, okay? Now, some of the cool facts in here, we'll talk about the sizes of sharks. So again, you might wanna use your measuring tape. You can go outside and measure them out in the street or on the sidewalk, it'd be kind of cool, okay? Um, one of the most important things to realize about a shark is that they don't have any bones. They have something called cartilage, and you're gonna read about that. What is cartilage? If you touch the tip of your nose right here, that is cartilage. And that is what a whole body of a shark is made up of, is cartilage. So this is cartilage. This on your ear is cartilage, okay? So as you're reading, you, you kind of have two things to do. I would read it once or twice over. You're going to use the colors to identify the evidence in the text by underlining them. So the first one says, Use a yellow crayon to color the word sharks throughout the story. So every time you see the word sharks, you're gonna take your yellow crayon and you're going to color it yellow. And then if you see sharks again, you're going to color it yellow. And then if you see it again, you're gonna color it yellow. You're gonna keep coloring all the times it says that, okay? And you're gonna follow those directions. Then you're going to complete the questions when you're done. Now again, the questions and the answers are all related to the, art the article. So again, you're going to find the evidence in the text to answer your questions in complete sentences, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put all those papers up on the dojo. Remember, you have your fact chart that you can add um, the most interesting facts about sharks, I would add at least three or four every single day. Okay, then I'm going to upload the facts article. I'm going to upload the different assignments you need to do or the colors. And then I'm going to upload the questions. Okay, so this is going to be for Monday. I'm going to give you some uh, different assignment on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, so I wouldn't put this off, I would do this today, and that way it's done, okay? Um, if you wanna read other stories um, during this time, during this week, that's fine. Um, one of the really good stories is this one, it's called Incredible Sharks. It is a nonfiction book. There's lots of really um, interesting facts and pictures about sharks that you can read about. Um, there's also a book called Big Sharks, and this also has um, a ton of really great facts about sharks, great pictures about sharks, um, lots of different things that you can find about sharks online and in different books, okay? So again, I'm gonna put those up. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to um, send me a message or send me a text, okay? All right, guys, have a great afternoon.